All right, welcome back. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, news of the day here. I also want to show, like today, um, my wife checked the mailbox here locally, and somebody sent this really nice card. So Gabrielle, we got the card, and when it's got that kind of a, a fun little uh, effect in the middle, yeah, that's I, I understand why somebody would would get that and say, hey, I should sit sit should sit down and write him a letter. So. Uh, the letter in the card is greatly appreciated as well. I did read it, and thank you so much for watching. And it's that kind of stuff that does make me think. You know, the previews and reviews are, yeah, they're 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 worth it. There are days where I think, you know, I could do something else. Uh, I almost get into the whole "I'm a lumberjack" song, but I don't. But I mean, I'm I'm in British Columbia, so I'm that close, right? All right. So news today: Kale Clegg has been claimed on waivers by the Montreal Canadiens from the LA Kings. Uh, defenseman, so we'll see what Montreal's plans are for him, how long he's a member of the Habs, does he end up on waivers again later in the season, and yeah, so we'll see what happens with Clegg and what the plan is going forward. The good news too for Montreal tonight, looks like Hoffman's going to be in the lineup, and so with Hoffman back, that should help their attack, and they, they need that. Really, Montreal needs all the help they can get right now in a season that already looks lost. Um, I want to talk about Bet99 because they're advertised every 10 seconds on TV. The Ottawa Senators have, have uh, paired up in a, in a sponsorship deal with them to put ads on helmets uh, for this season. Uh, Elliot Friedman speculating, and I think he's right on this one, that it's the first sports book ad we've had on helmets. And again, I've talked about this before, the whole sports book betting thing, and, and my discomfort with some of the stuff that I see in games and i understand it's a whole sponsorship thing this is why i don't do any kind of a sponsorship agreement with a betting site because it's just that old slippery slope to where eventually i'm doing a video where i'm like here's the odds for tonight and here's the odds of this happening and oh if you bet on I, and i no, no it's just it feels like we're being inundated with it a lot right now and so yeah uh that that's now on on helmets and all I could think when I heard that was, you know, you guys advertise every 10 seconds on Sportsnet, so I think we know you're there. All right. Uh, people upset today that there was nothing given in supplementary discipline for P.K. Subban. And here's the thing. On its own, if it wasn't Subban, and if I showed the play, and I, I, if there was no way to tell who the players were, that it was Ehlers and Subban, I don't think anybody would pay much attention to it. Because it's Subban, and at this point, people are paying a lot of attention, these trips are garnering a lot more attention. Uh, discussion than I think otherwise they would warrant. The thing is, the one from last night on Ehlers, I totally get why there was no supplementary discipline. Uh, it was not a huge fall, whereas the one that Marshawn was involved in, that was a pretty dangerous looking fall there. And so, again, I, I understand why people are upset, but you have to take these, these incidents just looking at them on their own, as well as previous histories and all that. And so, I, I get why Subban doesn't have any supplementary discipline, and I also understand why every time he is tripping somebody like that, people get upset. I will say this, Subban being involved in this many tripping incidents means that his game has, has got this flaw in it. it. It's not a feature that you're out there tripping guys, because if you're in the right spot, you, you're not tripping guys. So the fact that he's, he's throwing this many trips means he's out of position. There's, there's really not much else to say, but he's, he's out of position. And is it dangerous? Yes. Some of some of the incidents we've looked at this year have been dangerous. The one last night, I think, is probably the most innocuous of them. But, again, uh, player safety hasn't said anything to this point other than the, the two fines. You would think the next one would be a suspension. That's not the one that'll get it done. But he's, he's got to clean up his game. Because, again... Uh, even from a New Jersey standpoint, he's in a contract year, right? They're not going to look at that and say, well, we, we need to bring him back next year. This is a situation where if he's causing them a lot of distraction or if he's taking a lot of penalties, he likely isn't uh, coming back for, for New Jersey next season. Especially if they have a down year again where they expect it to be better. They they may look at Subban and say, well, we could, we could fix the blue line and we can move on and this kind of thing. Uh, Washington. Oshie. Sherry. Set to return. Uh, TJ Oshie, that's a huge addition. But so Sherry. Sherry's good depth up front. Uh, they've needed that. I mean, they've had some some good production from guys like Protus. Malenstein's been good for them too. But ideally, you're going to have your veterans in there and playing. Uh, Washington, at least over the last 
you know, month or so, have got a good look at their future, and it's not bad. McMichael hasn't put up the points yet that might have been expected, but he's played pretty well. So Oshie and Sherry being set to return, good news. TVR goes into uh, protocols today, but yeah, the, the, the rotating door of protocols is just part of it now. Um, all right, and for Ranger fans, there's good news, bad news. The bad news is that Shesterkin is on the injured reserve. So he's going to be out for a bit. The good news is it's not going to be that long. Uh, they did an MRI, and they're saying that it is very unlikely to be a long-term injury. So to me, that sounds like your week-to-week -week kind of thing, and uh, that they'll reevaluate him once a week and see how he's doing. But it's good news for the Rangers, because if Shesterkin's out for an extended period, you do have Georgiev, you do have Kincaid as well, who can come up and play. But as much as I like Georgiev, yeah, Shesterkin's just better. So we'll see how long he's out. Uh, Darnell Nurse is now seen as day-to-day. -day. He's been out for a while, but they're saying he's getting close. So uh, that's good news for the Oilers. The Oilers have also had a good look at their blue line depth. Uh, Broberg's been good in his call-up. Um, I think that Znoka Linen last night looked all right. And Bouchard's had a chance to play a greater role while Nurse has been out. So when Nurse comes back, I think that blue line just gets stronger. Uh, so he has returned to full practice. He is he is going to be back, you would think, within the week. Nurse should be back in the lineup for Edmonton. Uh, interesting note from today's game between Florida and, and St. Louis. So it was not a great game for St. Louis. Uh, Tarasenko kind of stands out just playing 14 minutes and 20 seconds, which seems low. He had no shot attempts in the game either, and he was a minus two. And Craig Berube after the game said there's some stuff they need to talk to him about. So what's interesting with Tarasenko is he's playing with St. Louis. Everything starts out really well early on in the season. Now we see him with no shot attempts and a minus two. And so the question can start to be brought up again of, so what if Vlad decides, no, I, I, I think a trade would be best for me. Or what if Florida decides a trade might be best for them? So Tarasenko, it might be worth to, worth watching his shot attempts, his, his ice time and all that. Because if he falls out of favor with Barubi and the coaching staff, that could lead to a rise again of the idea that maybe he is going to be on the block and on the move. Uh, Lazat was added to the protocol list today for the Kings. The Kings have recalled TJ Tynan. They've also called Jared Anderson Dolan up, which means we could have a game with Anderson, Anderson, and Anderson Dolan. And I'm here for it. My only hope would be that it would be against Carolina and that Freddie Anderson would be in that at the other end of the ice. You know, fingers crossed on that one. But, uh, yeah, so the LA Kings, uh, they've, they've also had, I think it's a Thanasiu just came off protocol yesterday. They're not saying he's going to be ready yet. So he's working on getting his, his strength back and getting back on in, into the lineup. But uh, unlikely to play in their next game. Uh, interesting news with Columbus. Tarasov is set to start tonight against Washington. The plan is to start Elvis Merzlikens tomorrow against San Jose as Corpus Allo is still a little ways out with illness. And so, yeah, we'll see how Tarasov does against Ovechkin. He has to be excited about playing against Ovechkin. Probably also kind of sort of terrified. Wouldn't blame him for the terrified part of it either. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how things go in that game too. Uh, and for Tampa fans, Kucherov was at the morning skate. Obviously, didn't play. Um, he he's not playing tonight. But uh, yeah, he was at the morning skate, and he's getting closer. So he could be two to four weeks out with the Braden Point injury. And I mean, there's been some uneven results here and there, but Tampa's still earning enough points and wins that uh, they haven't fallen off the pace. Getting Kucherov back would be huge for them. So hopefully, that happens sooner rather rather than later. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding any of these items. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happen upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.